Washington census uh, describes a set of policies that were uh, <clears throat> were pushed hard uh, by the IMF and, and even more at one point by the World Bank. Um, during a period in which the developing countries and not least the African countries were in in very great difficulty, economic difficulty. <clears throat> but well, well before that, uh, there is a, a certain inbreeding among uh, policy people in Washington within the Beltway, as they say there. Um, and it's very difficult to uh, break out of that. Uh, I, I uh, worked uh, not only in wider, but in, in other places, notably the IDRC, the International Development Research Center of Canada, uh, to build uh, different patterns, different networks of, of, of thought and experience so that it would not all uh, derive from uh, one central cent one central base, one center of thought, um, so that no matter what the policy issue, <clears throat> it would not be filtered through Washington uh, and then uh, brought back to you. So if, if Argentina uh, had something happening, uh, it got analyzed in Washington and its experience was fed uh, to uh, Nigeria uh, from Washington, not from Argentina to Nigeria and back directly, which I think is, is, is uh, was unfortunate and uh, was necessary to do something about. The, the principal issue was whether the uh, stabilization programs were throttling the prospect of uh, growth and development. Uh, in our uh, earlier stages, um, we did not make as much of an issue of uh, income distribution as UNICEF later did. We were uh, before adjustment with a human face uh, under your, uh, UNICEF, with which I was also associated. Uh, in, in our day, it, in, 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 the, in our project, it was mainly about, uh, as, as in fact the developing countries group, the group of 24 had previously argued, uh, about the need to uh, sustain development, sustain growth, and not uh, throttle, it, throttle it. it. It was uh, as if... Uh, the IMF was asking people to hold their breath, to tighten their belts. Um, but to, but at, at some point you have to breathe again. And there was, it wasn't obvious that uh, having tightened the belt, you would ever be able to breathe again. And, and we, we, we tried to think through the uh, investment implications, the longer term implications of uh, the kind of growth throttling uh, austerity programs that the IMF was demanding. Uh, and that, in the case of, of uh, this project, involved some uh, quite different uh, modeling approaches, which uh, IMF analysts thought uh, peculiar at, at, at our at our final session in Helsinki, uh, and this was, I guess, in 1986. Um, prior to the writing of Lance Taylor's summary volume, 
but after all 18 authors had done pretty close to a final draft, we invited two IMF research people. Uh, should I name them? Um, at, uh, to, to the meeting. And it was clear throughout that they thought we were wild uh, and that we were all uh, pupils of Lance Taylor's strange ideas and uh, why didn't we, why didn't we uh, follow their uh, orthodoxy? And it actually, in the final session of that uh, conference, in, in the meeting, it became uh, very, very heated over a discussion on uh, Argentina. And uh, it became uh, so heated that I was in the chair uh, and, and the meeting uh, couldn't stop. People, uh, the 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 building, the time had come for the meeting to end. It was five o'clock, and everybody said, "No, we we can't stop. This is, has to go on. We have to hear." The Argentines uh, were uh, telling the IMF research analysts who had not been on the missions, who did not know what had actually transpired in detail. Uh, whereas the Argentine, who later became a member of the board, of, the wider board actually, uh, was directly involved, knew exactly what was going on, and and was very angry and told the IMF people so. Uh, and this, uh, so, so our meeting went on. And they finally told us they had to close the building at an hour and a half later. Um, we finally stopped. But from that, largely, I think, from that, uh, there came uh, back to us uh, the word that in Washington, other places, wider, was now known as wilder. <laughs> My... Uh, principal work, at least the places where I have lived uh, and worked, uh, were African, and the, <clears throat> the need for uh, capacity was, was, was obvious uh, as, as evident by the fact that I was uh, being asked to do work that Africans should have been doing. Um, <clears throat> and I had no knowledge of the local background, history, culture, language. Uh, it was crazy for, for people like me, let alone IMF missions, uh, to be trying to analyze uh, complex policy questions in, in uh, African countries. So it was perfectly obvious that one, one had to build uh, that local capacity to make their own policy questions in their own interest. If, if you are in possession of technical tools that your adversary in an argument does not possess, uh, you are able, uh, and certainly in modern economics, to say, as Carlos would put it, hocus pocus, mumbo jumbo, therefore you are wrong. And the essential thing was to build the capacity of people uh, so that they could say, mumbo jumbo, hocus pocus, I have another result. Um, and you require credibility in the profession of economics. You have to, even if you think the models are crazy, even if you think uh, the assumptions are all screwed up and even if you think it doesn't apply to the real world, you still need to be able to talk the language in order to be credible. And uh, the hocus pocus mumbo jumbo was, I think, uh, a perfect illustration of uh, the kind of thing that was, that was happening. Uh, but particularly where I know 
best in, in, in Africa. Although Carlos was uh, drawing on his Latin American experience, uh, where uh, missions would come in uh, for two or three weeks, analyze the situation, produce results. And if you objected, you, you don't understand the model. Uh, this is our model. Uh, there'd be a number of equations, actually very simple, crude ones, uh, were in use at that time. Um, and uh, that was it. You had no, uh, no way in which you could argue back unless you had the relevant tool. There is a book put out by the IMF that I have edited. Uh, I chaired a meeting uh, between the IMF and the governors of African Central Banks. Uh, they subsequently didn't ask me to do it again. Uh, but I was, in, I, I, I was credible enough. Uh, so that I, I did appear in, uh, in lots of World Bank uh, events uh, prominently appear, and in one uh, drastic uh, uh, IMF one, which I was to which I was not invited back. Uh, Robert McNamara um, <coughs> was uh, a supporter of wider. I don't know that, w that this is widely known, and in uh, the fall of 1985, Lao. Uh, decided that he would <coughs> reach out <laughs> to uh, many of his contacts in, uh, in the public services of the world as well as academics and form an international advisory, international economic advisory group. These were people who would, uh, would advise on projects in the international arena, not domestic poverty issues. And one of those who came uh, at Lau's invitation was Robert McNamara. He believed, I think, that uh, as many of us believed, that it, it was not healthy for uh, so much development expertise to be concentrated in one place. Um, where there was inevitably, I mean, there were disagreements among World Bank personnel, but, but there was a certain brand, a certain party line, that uh, it, it was dangerous to go too far away from. And he believed that uh, it, 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 that was unhealthy. It would be good for the world to have other places in which uh, similar problems were addressed without the constraints that uh, World Bank personnel faced, uh, a, a, a place that was independent, uh, academically oriented, but policy relevant. And uh, he, was, he was quite keen on that. And uh, in, in, in his later years, uh, he, he uh, he was a more open-minded, and I, I found him to be a, a, a good companion. I, I, I can't speak for his historical uh, record, not, not all of which I approve of, but as a, as a companion on, on UN committees and uh, at this wider meeting, uh, he was a pleasant person to be with. As the original project with Lance Taylor came to an end, um, he, uh, I guess we both decided we would move to uh, a second stage on medium term strategy. The original uh, project was based on sheer stabilization. If you had raging inflation and the balance of payments problem that was out of control, uh, how did you deal with it? That, that was the original issue. Our second project was uh, what do you do uh, in the medium term, three, five years, something like that. 
And I joined that one and wrote the paper on trade, uh, trade policy. Um, subsequent, well, I guess by the end of that meeting, uh, Lance uh, decided he wanted to have another round uh, featuring the role of the state in longer term, even longer term policy. <clears throat> At that point, I thought I, I, I wanted to focus on trade. Uh, I had uh, invested some in that, believed it to be important, I believed there were uh, many things wrong with the way in which it was being treated in policy. Um, and uh, at the end of that uh, meeting on medium-term adjustment, I sat down and wrote a proposal for a trade project. And uh, that was uh, an attempt first to challenge the theoretical base of current uh, trade theory, trade policy, uh, theory and policy, and secondly to uh, once again, draw on Southern uh, research people to analyze their own experience with uh, trade and related policies, uh, with particular reference to industrialization, which was their uh, prime concern in, in the discussions we had had. And from that came uh, first, a book on, on th essentially the theoretical base, and then uh, my favorite project, which was the 18-country uh, study, each done by someone from the country, um, which was uh, a challenge to the then uh, dominant view, which was the product of an OECD study by uh, Little, Skatowski, and Scott, three eminent uh, northern economists with no experience in developed countries whatsoever. Um, our project was uh, intended to challenge their conclusions, which were very orthodox, which were essentially uh, free trade is good for you, liberalize uh, as soon as you can, as fast as you can. All the problems that uh, developing countries were facing were the product of import substitution, which had been a mistake. Uh, heavy protection had damaged uh, their uh, development prospects. Um, and trade, uh, liberalized trade, was the solution to their problems. That I'm, of course, I'm, I'm simplifying, but that's the gist of what they had to say. We uh, we knew that there are many many choices between uh, autarky, zero trade, and free trade. As in the stabilization project, the, the uh, essence of the, uh, of the findings was variety. Um, enormous range of policies, uh, many of which had nothing to do with trade, that uh, influenced the prospect and success or failure of industrialization and development more generally. Um, there were um, many, many policy tools, even in the trade arena, um, which were more complicated than the the orthodoxy made out. So the the, the orthodoxy had a very oversimplified view that uh, policies that had been pursued were anti-export uh, and uh, across the board they, this was damaging. Uh, what we uncovered was in fact 
uh, most countries had all kinds of pro-export policies in place to offset any anti-export bias. And some of them are direct subsidies, some of them may be uh, illegal under, under the uh, international rules, but going forward nonetheless. And all sorts of uh, uh, credit, uh, specialized credit arrangements to favor uh, companies that needed uh, help. Uh, it was just a whole lot more complicated. The, the uh, range, uh, the, the range of incentives within the incentive system that economics is supposed to be studying uh, was enormous and could not be simplified into uh, anti-export bias and import substitution. Moreover, a lot of the import substitution had been very successful, uh, had generated uh, success stories uh, that eventually led to uh, uh, world competitive exports. And the, the story was simply more complicated, more diverse, um, and uh, above all, to me, uh, the, the role of the exchange rate uh, emerged as uh, dominating all trade policy influences. Now, this, this was a period of, of uh, global economic turbulence. Study, studies we were doing were uh, during a period of, of really uh, great uh, global imbalances, and, and we put it in the title of the book, Turbulent Times. Um, and the variations in, in exchange rates uh, and m actually more accurately real exchange rates, inflation adjusted exchange rate, uh, were, were very great and were typically uh, greater than the height of the highest tariff. So it wasn't about uh, tariffs so much uh, as about varying exchange rates. If you really want to understand whether countries were making the success or not of their uh, industrial policy. In general, in the, the message was industrial policies uh, go far beyond trade policy and the exchange rate, uh, the real exchange rate, is enormously important, particularly in times of uh, global uh, turbulence. The new wider director at that time was Andre Cornia, uh, <coughs> who was an old friend for whom I had written a nice letter of recommendation for his appointment at wider. Uh, I, I know Amartya Sen wrote one too. Um, <coughs> he had worked for UNICEF at a time when I was helping them as well. <coughs> and he asked me for ideas as to what Wider might do, and I, uh, I gave him a, a list of things I thought would uh, be worth doing, in all in the international arena, finance and trade. And uh, he he uh, he called my bluff. He he said, "Well, you know." What are you? You're giving me this. This. What are you going to? What are you going to do? You want? You have to do something. What? What would you? What would you do with this? And I looked again at the list, and uh, thought, well, uh, the non-traditional exporting from Africa had been something that uh, had bothered me as a policy matter for, for years, and had kept coming up in AERC meetings. Uh, the, the African Economic Research Consortium, where African research people presented their 
their research findings on, on their economic problems. Uh, the repeated, uh, repeated discussions of the need to develop uh, something other than the primary products, uh, oil and minerals and agricultural products uh, were their base. And um, it seemed to me that a project that focused on how other countries had done it, had moved, as they had in Southeast Asia in particular, um, would be useful for Africa. And I hoped to uh, involve lots of African researchers in that project. Uh, I did, in, uh, in the first instance, I, I think we started with eight countries uh, but uh, limitations of data and uh, uh, quality of uh, early uh, inputs were such that we ended up with only five, and half of the book that we produced uh, was devoted to uh, other countries in uh, Asia and uh, Central America that had successfully moved into new non-traditional exports. Uh, but I think we did some, uh, some useful uh, education and capacity building in our, in our meetings about, about these matters, even among those who did not complete the project with wider. They, I think they probably benefited from our discussion of what needed doing. Uh, how to analyze it? Um, I, I I think so, but but that book on non-traditional exports <clears throat> has not, uh, to my mind, been uh, been one of the uh, the better ones in which I was involved. The ones I am proudest of are the uh, the one that Lance Taylor wrote, in which my name isn't on. Uh, but which I think I had some influence on, and the the fat one on uh, uh, trade policy and industrialization in turbulent times, which um, had 18 country studies and and a great introduction uh, summarizing it, uh, but which received no attention whatsoever in the academic world. It, it, to my knowledge, it was never reviewed in an academic journal. I, I never saw a review of it. And uh, partly to offset that, uh, Lal, or, or perhaps uh, someone else in wider, decided it'd be a good idea to put out a discussion paper uh, summarizing our results. And I did that. <clears throat> which I think was a pretty good uh, summary of the project and what it found. And I thought, well, at least this will get around. And then I discovered that uh, at that time, uh, Wider's distribution uh, list was, was a problem. I, I started to ask my friends around the world, well, what, well, what did you think of my paper, my summary? What paper? They, they never heard of this paper. Wider's uh, publications just didn't seem to be going where uh, I thought they needed to go. I think things have changed a lot since then. And the uh, outreach and impact uh, uh, dissemination is a huge issue, which I did not understand during my years as an academic until much too late.